One feature that I really would like to have for almost any Power BI visual is the option to add a data table. Like this one over here, where we can show extra KPIs or contextual information for the data points in the main chart. And of course, everything should be perfectly lined up based on the items on the x-axis. Meaning, if we go and level up, that table should also adjust. Now, the bad news is, at the moment, there's no easy way to achieve this. However, it is also not impossible. Let me show you how it can be done. Oh, and of course, everything should be possible with just one visualization, not that we need two visuals that we line up above one another. Now, one thought that you might have is to create a matrix visual below the main chart, like over here, where we have a line chart at the top and then at the bottom, a matrix visual. Now, of course, at the beginning, not everything is perfectly lined up, but we could start to make adjustments to the width of the line chart and to the width of the columns to have everything perfectly lined up. Now, let me give you give this a try. I could, for example, take that line chart and adjust the width so that September 23 starts at the same point. And then over here, you see, I've already played around with the column widths a little bit so that it almost perfectly lines up. Now, this is not bad, right, at the moment. But what if we get new periods? Well, then everything starts to shift again and we have to make adjustments. And this becomes even more complex if we have to go and level up, right? So over here, I can go to the quarter level by using drill up. And then you will see, oh, I'm only drilling up in the line charts, not in the matrix visual. Now, as a workaround, we can make use of bookmarks, of course. Now, in this case, I've already set it up. So let me show you. Here I can click on the bookmark navigator button for quarters. You see, the matrix visual goes to the quarter level and the line chart also goes to the quarter level. But, well, we again have an issue with alignment. And then we can start trying to line everything up. For example, over here, this one can go a little bit to the right and then Q4 can go a little bit to, to the right. But you see, there's a lot of effort that you have to put in. And still, it's not perfect. Now, it does stick, however, right? So if I go to the month level and then back up, you see, it remembers the column width. It's just for new periods, you have to set it up again, all right? So not ideal. Now, if you're wondering, yeah, and what about the headers of the matrix visual? Well, those we could just make wide so that you don't see it. Now, you see, this is not really good enough and requires quite a bit of maintenance. Now, what I really need is a data table like this, which is nicely integrated into the main chart. Now, to set it up at the moment requires quite a few dummy measures and workarounds, but it's possible. Let me show you. Now, as a starting point, we have here a combo chart. So not a normal line chart, no, a combo chart where I have the sales amount on the line y-axis and then over here on the x-axis, the data hierarchy, year, quarter, and month. So that I can go up in the hierarchy and go down. Now, as a first step, we're going to create the cells for the data table at the bottom. Now, how are we going to do that? With the columns on the y-axis. Now, if we go to my data pane and then metrics, then here I created a folder with all of the measures that we're going to need. Now, starting off with row values one position. Now, this DAX measure just returns minus one if there's a sales amount. Okay, and just like that, we also have row values two position, which does exactly the same. Now, I'm going to take those measures and add them on the column y-axis, so over here, which just gives us big columns in the background of the line chart. But with formatting, we can push the columns down. Now let me show you. Here under formatting, y-axis, there we're going to set the maximum to, let's say, six. Now the value that you put there just depends on how big you want this data table to be. All right, and then we can go to the columns. And then here, I do not want to have a blue background for both of the series. So I select the first one, make it white, select the second one, and also make it white. Now, of course, you could also go for 100% transparency, whatever you prefer. All right, and then I want to add a border for both of them. So I go back over here to all and turn the border on. Now for the border, I like it to be a little bit thinner. Huh? So you can go here to width and the width of the border actually can be below one pixel. That's not for every element like this, but for borders it works. And then here on the layout, just make sure that series all is selected. Then we can over here increase the space between the series. So this one I can, for example, put to five. 
And that creates a little bit of vertical space between the boxes. And then we can also adjust the space between the boxes horizontally. So that one I'm going to put to 10%, let's say. All right, so the structure of the data table is already there. Now, of course, the line still overlaps, but that's a problem for later. Now, the next thing that I want to do is change the values that show on the data table, because now they're just empty, right? Now, that is something that we can do over data labels. So we're going to turn the data labels on. And over here, the data labels for the main chart, well, let's leave them. I actually like it. And then later on, we can get rid of the y-axis. And then for the data labels for row values one and two, there we want to have different values, right? Then minus one. And here we can say what measure should determine the values that show on it. Well, instead of row value one position, I'm going to change that to row values one text. And the same thing I'm going to do for the other one. So over here, we go also to value and I change that to the measure row values to text. Now you're probably wondering, what is that measure exactly? Now you see, we have over here different KPI values. And these KPI values are just showing the month over month or quarter over quarter difference, the change. Now, first of all, the measure just checks at what level are we with the is in scope function. So if we are at the month level, then I want to divide the sales amount by the sales amount of the previous month. So that we can do with the calculate function combined with date add, which pushes it one month back. And if we are at the quarter level, we do the same, but then we push it one quarter back. Now, that's it. And then the same I did over here for row values too text, but this just calculates the absolute change instead of the percentage change. Now we are actually already surprisingly close to the end result. Now the only thing that is really a problem is that the line chart overlaps the data table. And of course, this is a problem that we need to fix. Now, the trick that I have for that is to flip the line chart. So I just inversed total sales with a measure called sales flipped. Now, why is it not just minus and then sales amount? Because, well, this does a little bit of scaling. Now, first I'm going to put this part to one. And the first part I will get back to in a second. Now, let me add this measure onto line Y axis as well. I see we just have total sales mirrored and that pushes the other line up, but I don't want it to be up that much. And that's why I made a little bit of an adjustment there by multiplying it with 0.2. So this requires a little bit of configuration. And what about the first part? Well, if the sales amount is negative, well, our columns are also going down. So what you want to do then is take the sales amount that's negative and make it bigger, and then that pushes the line up, all right? So this logic, then always make sure that the line that shows is above the data table. Okay, going back to our chart. Now I can go to formatting, and I want to get rid of that line, which we can do by going to lines and then sales flipped, just turn it off. And the same thing we can do for the markers. So sales flipped, turn it off. Now, the only thing remaining still is the data labels. So over here, select sales flipped and turn it off. I also see that we have a legend there at the top, which we don't need. So the legend I'm going to turn off. All right. And also have for later on, take care of the tooltips, probably you want to go for a custom tooltip. I'm just going to turn that off as well. And now it starts to look pretty clean, right? So I can go to the chart, I can go to the quarter level, and you see the data table at the bottom, nicely adjust, even if I go to the year level. Also here, doesn't look too bad, even though we have just two data points to show. All right, so everything is working as I want it to be. However, there's still a few things that I want to adjust further. And that is, we don't know which KPIs are showing here. So we need a label there. And maybe we don't want to have the x-axis labels at the bottom, but yeah, in between, all right? Now, I'm going to turn the y-axis values off so that we don't need anymore. And then also for the secondary one, and we want to get rid of it. Oh, but oh, that messes everything up. So the secondary y-axis for the line needs to stay, but we can just make it white. And then how can we get labels here on the left hand side? Well, we could go for a line that shows at that level and then make use of series labels, or we just add another column there. Now that's actually the option that I went for, a little bit easier with the alignment. So let me show you, I go here to data, and here I have row label one position. Now here I just check the first date in the data set, all right? Then I have 
period offset based on the level that uh, that shows. So are we at the month, quarter, or year level? Then that flows into EO month, which changes the date, pushes it one month back or one quarter back. So depending on the period offset. And then if the minimum date is below or equal to that date and the maximum date in the filter context is equal to above it, then show minus one. So basically the whole thing is that it just shows this minus one in that period at the beginning, right? Just for that one period. That's the whole logic. All right, now that measure I can now add to our visualization right above the row value one position. And you see there it pops up. And the same thing for a row label two position. So also this one goes there at the top after row label one. And basically then the same logic continues, right? So we can again go over here to formatting, columns, and then here we make the color white. And we do that also for the other one. Now, probably I do not want to have a border for these two. And then for the data labels, there we need custom labels. So I go here to row label one position, value, and then here swap the measure with row label one text. And then also here, row label two, and then value. And I'm going to swap that for the measure that I wrote, row label two decks. Now you see the first one doesn't show probably because the chart is just not big enough. Yes, now it shows because it needs to fit in that column. That's important. And there you go. Now we can of course make this look a little bit nicer. Have, for example, as you go with semi balls, maybe it looks a bit better. And then I do the same for the other one. And we are almost there. Now the only thing that you probably want to change is that X axis. Maybe you want to have it just there in the middle. No. For that, again, a similar logic. We are going to create an x-axis row, or I call it row empty. Now, let me go to the chart, and then the x-axis I'm going to turn off, and then over here I go to the builds panel, and here I'm going to take row empty, and I put it here all the way at the top. And you see, that pushes everything down. Now, if you're wondering what is in there, over here in this measure we check if there's a sales amount or a row label, if there is, then show minus one and a half. Though minus one and a half is just depending on how much space you, want, you like to have. Okay, and then again, the same steps, right? So you see a similar trick repeating all the time. So row empty, that's going to be white, all right? Then here, we do not want to have the borders. And then I just want to change the values that show on the basis of, again, a different measure. Now here, we need to change the values that show for row empty. And we want to have for the value, not row empty, but x-axis labels. Now I will show you the measure in a second. And you see it just returns the month and something similar I've done also for the year. So if I go here and add a detail part below it, so we can extend that data label further, then you see I have here another measure, x-axis labels year, which only returns the year for the first month or the first quarter. Okay. Now, you can also play around with the positioning, right? So do you want to have it inside base? Then you see it aligns the months just a little bit better. Now, the measure, let me show you how that one is written. So I go here to x-axis labels and it again just checks, okay, what level are we on? And if we're at the month level and we have a sales amount, then return the month or the quarter or the year. And then for the year label, again, the same, but I don't want to show it when we're at the year level. And I only want to show it if the month equals January, the first month of the year. And that's it. Now I can go up and down using the drill up button and the expand down button. And all of my KPI values in the data table, they nicely adjust. I think that's pretty cool. However, it's just so many dummies that we need to get this to work. There should be an easier way, hopefully in the future, to get to that same functionality. All right, and then another thing to consider is maybe you want to add over here a bookmark navigator with buttons that lets you change the level at which we are viewing the visual. Now, this is actually really easy to set up using bookmarks. And so if I go to the bookmark panel and you see the bookmarks that I've set up, one for each level, then for each bookmark, I just have a check mark there for the data state so that it captures the drill state, right? And only for selected visuals so that we only capture the state for this visual, nothing else. Now, that's what I've done for each bookmark. 
And then I just updated the bookmark, going one level up. And then for the quarter level, update the quarter bookmark, go one level up. And then for the year level, update the year bookmark, etc. And then the bookmark navigator, you can insert here from insert, buttons, navigator, bookmark navigator. All right. And that's it. That's the whole track. So then after a little bit of fine tuning, this is the end result. And you see, I can switch the levels and the data table nicely adjust. Now, let me know your thoughts. Do you think this is helpful? Have you ever tried something like this? Or do you have any suggestions to further improve this? Then let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you like these kind of tricks and want to learn everything about good Power BI report design, how you can build really solid reports in a structured way so that every report that you create is a big success, then check out my design transformation program over here, which we have in the form of live sessions as well as a self-paced course version. All right. Now, thank you for watching. and I hope to see you in the next video.